All right, it is seven o'clock. I will call to order this meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on um, Monday, the 16th of September. First item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Do I have a second? Second. <coughs> Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, I would like to amend uh, the consent, the only item on our consent agenda to our next meeting, to table it until our next meeting. Mm hmm. All right. Um, where uh, do I have a second on the amendment? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The uh, Motion now is to approve the agenda uh, without the consent agenda item. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The agenda is approved as amended. Uh, next item on the agenda is the public session. Anyone have any, would like to address anything that is not on the warned agenda? Yes. Please. If I may. Please do. Uh, Justin Blackman representing the Waterbury Area Senior Centre. Mm -hmm. um, the board had previously been, uh, been very good and worked with us to use some of the ARPA funds um, for uh, what we were calling our hood project to try and get the Senior Centre kitchen up to code, mm -hmm. up, up to fire code. Um, I don't know how much people know about that, but um, uh, what was supposed to be the easiest part of the project was uh, supposed to be asking the, uh, the owners of the building on Stowe Street to, uh, to say, yes, please go ahead uh, and to have uh, holes in the wall, etc., to get everything up to code. Um, they were not able to give permission. Uh, to, for those upgrades to be done uh, on the grounds that they had uh, just uh, the year uh, leading up uh, applied for um, uh, a historic tax credit. Mm -hmm. So in doing so, they locked up um, five years worth of uh, no other exterior work allowed to be done to the building. Um, so that kind of messed up that uh, that project for the little while. We won't be able to start that until the first of the year in 26 <coughs> for that. And just to be clear, all you really need to do is to put a vent, correct? Uh, I'm sorry? You're not doing extensive exterior work. You're it, just it, a hole for it, it, it's a hole to run uh, a vent going up the outside onto the roof. That's right. Um, no, Justin, knowing enough about having having worked with historic tax credits, things are uh, safety issues. I think you, they can get an amendment to their tax credit for that. We, uh, we, we did go back and say, hold on, you've just done this extensive work for all of the residents upstairs, making sure everything's fire safe, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. Shame it didn't include fire safety in the kitchen downstairs. Um, uh, that did include them going back to uh, a, a special expert that they consult with um, and they came back and they said we tried we tried we tried but we are unable to uh, to, to to make that work so unfortunately we had to can uh, the the rest of that project mm -hmm. um, so we had spent had spent some of the ARPA funds on that in planning and uh, a few deposits and for some of the specialty hood that will still be available at, at the right time mm -hmm. um, but uh, that was uh, invoiced 10,551 <coughs> of the 26,000 for the project and the question to the board is um, how about if the senior centre were to use some of those remaining ARPA funds that we have not yet spent 
spent to help us towards some of the other kitchen equipment to go in the kitchen, and that would be a stove in particular. Um, to a cost, uh, there's uh, uh, the same brand we have right now is a Vulcan brand to $10,005. And that, that is the next piece of equipment in line that has started to fail and started to be expensive with repairs. There's always the next thing, right? There's always one, then another, then another. That's the next thing that is starting to cost us in repairs and looking to hopefully get replaced sooner rather than later. All right. Thank you for coming forward. We appreciate the update. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to... Say that we could give approval tonight, but we can't because it's not on the agenda. We'll have to get it on a warned agenda uh, for the next meeting. Uh, Kane, you had a comment. Well, I was just going to ask if <clears throat> that Vulcan equipment is your convection oven. That is that is the six burner stove with a two foot um, hot plate. That is not the convection. Right. That that is separate. That's uh, still old, but uh, not quite as in dire. Right. Uh, as of needing replacing as the stove is. Thank you. Justin, what would you do in terms of ventilation? Would you make some sort of change for some internal ventilation device? We, uh, so uh, that's interesting. So back to the fire marshal, et cetera. Right. Um, so the fire marshal is very happy to work with us. They know it is our intention to to get the the, the the new the new wider proper uh, hood cover done, um, they give us credit for keeping everything super clean at the moment and trying to keep our use of greasy materials to a minimum. So the fire marshal is in no way ready to shut us down or anything like that. They are they are willing to work with us. Good, thank you. All right. Any other comments? <coughs> Questions? Okay, yeah, we'll get it on the agenda. Uh, I think we're going to be meeting uh, the 30th of uh, September. Uh, we should be able to get it on the agenda for that awesome. to approve the uh, further spending. Thank you very much. Did Tom have a question? No, not. Okay. Anything else from the public that's not on the warrant agenda? <laughs> yes, sir. Do you have two <coughs> pens. Pens. Is that um, Al Lewis from Curry Hill, Waterbury, uh, Rotarian. I just want to personally thank you, Select Board, Tom, you, uh, my Rotary Club for Thursday. I uh, was totally blown out of the water to, to be surprised with the recognition that I got. And mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to come personally and thank you all and just assure you that as long as I'm a member of the Rotary Club, I will try to make sure that we continue the commitment that we made back in 1982, I think, or 83, when we first des uh, dedicated the, the park. And, uh, and that was to try to maintain the park facilities with the least amount of financial uh, concerns as far as the town is concerned. So uh, I hope we'll be able to do that. Right now we're, we're doing okay, and uh, I mm -hmm. think we will continue that. But I, I was, I was really shocked and surprised, and I just want to let you know, thank you very much for the recognition. Okay. Tom spoke at the, uh, in the gazebo there, and I, uh, he, he knows that <laughs> it, it, it came as a surprise. I had a daughter who was, came up from Maine, actually over from New Hampshire, and she was trying to hide, so, I did, so she didn't see me. <laughs> I didn't see her. And then when I got up on stage, I'm looking at her right in the eyes. I'm like, oh, hmm. what's going on? So anyway, that's all. I just yeah. wanted to thank you folks. Well, that's great, Al. Well deserved. And I'm um, sorry I wasn't able to make it myself, but I hear from thank Tom you. that it was thank great. You all that you do. We thank really you. appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Clarity for my minutes. What was the recognition? Uh, the for Al Lewis's 42 years of dedication to the Rotary and Rusty Parker. Thank you. 42 years? 42 years. Mm -hmm. Chris, yes. Um, question is, have we already begun the uh, official reappraisal process? <coughs> so 
there'll be a select board briefing on it soon, but um, informally, yes, formally, no, there's a legal process where we notify a lot of landowners, but okay. we're prepared. We're beginning very soon. So a question was brought to my attention um, after seeing some of these other towns' results with the reappraisal process, basically doubling everybody's re you know appraisal, whether or not we could simply forego that process, use that money for something else, and just follow suit with what seems to be the trend uh, with <coughs> adjacent towns. I don't know if it's just an idea. Um, that appraisal process is going to cost us what? 120,000? Um, probably closer to two. Two. Oh. So if, if, if there's a chance that that could happen, I'm just throwing <coughs> it out there, and uh, that the differences might be negligible, that we'd save ourselves 200,000, we could put towards something else and still end up right in par with everybody else. So, so one, there's a, there's a few different ways to do the reappraisal process. And, and there's a full reappraisal where you, you get inside a large subset of homes and that's how you determine values. And there's what they call a book reappraisal, which is more looking at MLS sales data, other market data and trying to you know, adjust to that. Um, I think I'm of the opinion we need a full reappraisal because it has been some time since we've we've had a reappraisal. Um, but we get um, we get money every year from the state that we reserve for reappraisal, and off the top of my head, it's um, something like twenty grand, and right. the town has thrown some other money into the reappraisal reserve. So it's it's effectively been saved for. <coughs> yeah, I just didn't know if we could cash in on it and end up with you know. In the same square as everybody else, so mm -hmm. just a thought. But Chris, we have a bunch of money that's dedicated for ARPA funds. Right. Thought we move that move that back. We move it back. Yeah. back. But we didn't. Yeah, we didn't need it because we had the reappraisal okay. funding. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Chris. <coughs> um, unless anyone else has something, yes, Tom. Just a quick announcement. Um, had to pick a date. Um, staff and board member, including all the volunteer boards, pancake breakfast. November 15th, which is a Friday. So I, I don't have all the details yet, but I think last time we, we started serving at 7, and I think it was 7 to 9. That's just a, based on memory, so. <coughs> and this is for all the town employees? Town employees and, and, e board, and board members and EFUD. So as I recall, last time we started, those of us at Cook started at 6. We started serving at 7 um, mm -hmm. at Leo's. I don't think you were on payroll yet, but you were a good pantry <laughs> flipper. <laughs> we're very, very appreciative. Um, have powers that be checked that the space is available? Yes. All right. And uh, I'll just note that uh, Karen received an email from Will Robins, uh, who's race director for the Leaf Beeper. Uh, who said that uh, they have been able to get uh, additional uh, support from the sheriff's office uh, for uh, maintaining the safety of that uh, event. Um, they had checked previously with the fire department, but their fire department was not available to help out. Uh, so uh, I guess the Washington County Sheriff will be helping out with uh, Make sure that the uh, <coughs> safety plan that they presented will be uh, implemented. All right. Next on the agenda is the River of Light Parade and a safety plan. Come on down. Come on down. Your next contestant. Hi, I'm Carol Bates. Um, I'm May McKee. Um, MK asked this summer if I would um, help be the liaison person uh, <coughs> between herself, the River of Light uh, Parade, and the rec department. Mm -hmm. And one of the things on my list of to-dos was to come here and present our safety plan. It was uh, emailed to Karen. And uh, the only thing that's incorrect is the, um, it says River of Light 2023. 
it should be 2024. But everywhere else, we've uh, changed the dates to the appropriate time. Um, it's basically the same exact proposal as last year. Uh, the only thing that has been changed is I took out the names of the people who will be doing road closures at each spot um, because we haven't asked people yet because it's pretty early, uh, but that we would get those names to you um, well before the River of Light. So MK wants to ask the Rotary first, and then I'm going to post on Front Porch Forum for volunteers. And I've asked Gary Dillon for um, advice about training for road closure safety procedures. And he's going to give me a website for to share with um, volunteers to go over safety procedures. Um, do you want me to go through the proposal, or are you guys? Uh, it looks very similar to the one we had last year. Yeah, so, it's exactly uh, the same. I don't know if we need a blow-by-blow -blow, uh, description of it. Uh, what's the theme this year? It is, it's on here somewhere. Critters. I know what it is. Critters. Go ahead. <laughs> Critters and creatures. Critters, Critters and creatures. And creatures. All right, good. I don't know if that impacts the uh, safety plan at all, but uh, it's good to know. <laughs> Other questions? Mike? I'm sure being, I'm a, I'm a Rotarian, so I'm sure the Rotary would be, and with, with uh, you know, NQID, we have a lot of experience with road closures, so yes. I'm sure we'd be glad to help in yes. shape or form. That's As a matter of fact, I'll bring it up at tomorrow's Rotary meeting. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Okay. I'll let MK know. <laughs> and. Michael Bard? Yep. Okay. I will let MK know that you will bring it up at tomorrow's Rotary meeting. Thank you so much. And on behalf of uh, Waterbury Winterfest, uh, we'll be glad to <coughs> offer a few volunteers as well. That's right, dear. We'll another be, uh, one. Thank you. Taking on yeah. uh, the junction at uh, Winooski Street, unless uh, Rotary takes it before us. Any other questions? Uh, do I have a motion to accept the uh, safety plan? I move to accept the River of Lights Lantern Parade safety plan for 2024. Second. Okay. Mm, I think I heard it here first. Well, he's right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. That's the second scissors. time he has been shut out of the seconding uh, process. To, uh, <laughs> all right, right you're second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Any town staff with other comments? Or yeah, yes, comment? please do. Sorry, Katerina Lasayas, director. Oh, director. I didn't even see Dr. Katerina. Oh, I didn't even see I just want to say that it's been great to work with um, this group already. We met at the beginning of the summer to prepare for the Lantern Parade. We just met recently, just last month, to prepare for it. We have new ideas for this year down at Dacro, and having done it last year, we have a pretty easy blueprint to, to um, move forward with. So thank you. We're presenting it to you this month so that you don't hear from us a week before the parade, um, but we will send an update with the traffic control people. Yes. May I make a comment Please as do. well? Yep. I noticed on your next meeting, um, parade and event permits is oh, on there. Under parking it, lot. It's on parking lot, which is. Okay. The parking lot, you can sit in the parking lot for a long time. <laughs> oh, yeah. got it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> the, this is different from the parking lot uh, across from Pet right. Pig. Where yes. You <laughs> well, you have to pay a lot of money to park there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. All set then? Did you vote? Uh, no. We Sorry. Have to vote. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Your safety plan is approved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roger Clapp. All right. Thank you, everyone. You bet. Next on the agenda is um, 
the input process for feedback on the development of Armory, in uh, parentheses, Woody Avenue. Oh, you missed that whole, uh, that whole fun conversation, Mike. We found out that it was officially on the E911. Mm -hmm. It's referred to as Woody Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. Yes. And it's unclear whether the select board has any say on uh, the naming of the streets. So, but until further notice, that uh, street that runs behind uh, the Brookside Primary School is known as Woody Avenue. So there you go. Which, as of right now, zero mailing addresses. Uh huh. <laughs> but that, that's what we're here to discuss, right? Uh, or the input process for that. Um, so, do we have a proposed input process? Not, not in the packet. Um, but in, in talking with staff, um, there's still a little bit of work to be done because one of the lots um, is part of that, uh, is part of what's called uh, Land and Water Conservation Fund Land, which is permanent reserved for recreation. So as part of that process, a different part of the lot would have to be permanently preserved for recreation. And that's, that's a process um, I wasn't sure how to undertake, but um, Got to give an awful lot of credit. Um, reached out to Rebecca Ellis in her office, and she steered me in the right direction. Um, just because when I when I did a little searching, it wasn't clear if I went to the state government for that or, or which federal agency. And three federal agencies oversee that program, so I just thought this is why you have congressional, you know, staff. Mm -hmm. um, but I go through the uh, Department of Forests and Parks, and Rebecca gave me the contact person. So I think. Um, want to have some clarity on that process, if the select board is involved, what the timing of that is. So, so our thought on that and, and having some other internal work was that staff would have a more complete idea of what's possible there and what, what we think makes sense by October 18th, and that's a Friday. <coughs> and then in thinking about it and having conversation internal, um, <coughs> The direction is to have the public is to have some public input well before there's a final proposal. That way, we can modify the proposal based on some some input from the neighbors. So the thought is to have a public meeting um, before November 15th. So basically, a month after having some internal clarity, and so within that month, that should give plenty of time to schedule a meeting and make sure all the interested parties are involved and have some, have a chance to weigh in. You say November 15th? November 15th. <laughs> that was the thought, to have the public meeting by that date. Or to perhaps have a couple meetings if it's, if we need to make it convenient for people to have a couple options to show up. And the mm -hmm. thought was to, to treat this, um, not just have a regular warm meeting, but also just to personally notify the abutters and the people in the neighborhood to make sure they've they're duly warned of the matter. And then at that meeting to present some concepts um, and, and take it take it from there and potentially modify the proposal depending on that meeting and the input. So just for context, so Tom and town staff had worked on this and it got brought up for the first time at our last meeting a week ago at the, <coughs> and I love this phrase, supposal of a thing we maybe could do with the town parcel here. Um, and it had been really quickly vetted by the Housing Task Force just, and their feedback was also, what is the public input process? Um, we said we wouldn't care about it before October 7th, but I'm hearing, so now Tom, you're saying, town staff will have a better idea looking at the second meeting up in October? That, like that's our internal first. deadline. I think we can probably meet the second. The biggest issue is just if we, if it's going to be a challenge or time-consuming process to modify that land and water conservation fund piece, mm -hmm. then the question would be: Do we want to take that time, or do we want to have? Um, do we want to simply one cut out a lot, mm -hmm. so we don't need to change that, or take the time, or perhaps essentially put it out to the market in stages? So, if in fact we get clarity that we can do this, but it's a six-month process, then that's probably perfectly acceptable given development timelines, but if in fact it's more of a challenge to do it, 
it might just be better to modify the map and, and not deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. Alyssa? Sorry, I was just speaking out of turn. Um, I think in general, I really applaud having more time for public input, and I think it's just this question for us to weigh on the select board around like where feels appropriate. I don't want to be over or underwriting staff. I will say I felt it was really important to have this discussion before we had plans out in select board packets that we're going to get up in the universe without context. Um, so I guess it's just a question: Do we feel like there, you know, is the intent to have? at our second meeting in October, uh, initial conversation. I love the idea of getting input kind of before we're finalizing, but essentially saying that there's more like useful info, we need to have this sorted out before we start getting info. And the thought is rather than spend money on consulting fees to you know, look at lots and have sketch plans um, on something that may not occur in the end, and, and if we have those costs, we have to recoup them. So take a little time just and to look at the lots and to say, you know, for example, lot number four is, is X acres and, 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 and we think a, a home of, of a certain square footage is appropriate. And then simply look at our zoning maps and identify nearby properties that are similar so the neighbors have a comparable to look at. So you can look at this, you know, right down the street and say, here's the same lot size, same house. This is how it will appear in real time rather than spending pretty substantial amount of money on, uh, of money on sketch drawings. Mm -hmm. And Tommy, you're proposing that the staff would do that <coughs> in preparation for uh, yeah. second meeting, second select board meeting in uh, October? Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, Alyssa, you mentioned that uh, the, this had been brought before the uh, <coughs> Housing Task Force, uh, did they have any further uh, input? Or I noticed that uh, Joe Camerata is uh, online tonight. Maybe he has. Yeah, Joe wasn't unfortunately able to meet the meeting, and we had barely a quorum. So we had six of us. And I will say, we didn't have any municipal staff presenting the project. So certainly myself speaking for it didn't have all the context in terms of some of the like additional considerations. I mean, we all had the notes from that meeting. At our last meeting, feedback included what is the input process, which is the discussion we're having now in terms of that being really important. That group did have some considerations around size and types of units. So again, I think it's part of this question of like, when and where is that useful to provide? Obviously, we have the minutes, so staff is aware of it. But you know, a lot of the proposal included single family housing. There was folks in that meeting who felt like that wasn't the choice they would advocate for. So. That's not on behalf of the whole group, but that's one example of a piece of feedback we've gotten in terms of considering this moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, they meet again, it's, I mean, our standard meeting is the third Thursday, so it would be the 17th <coughs> from 6 to 8. Um, I don't know how that aligns with the proposed staff feedback, and then I would just note there's other, like, we have the Planning Commission, I know Amy's on from Conservation, so there's like a number of groups in terms of, I think, maybe having those listed. I also know the Planning Commission has been doing a lot of work for the town plan update just on like groups you could reach out to. Um, so that's another piece we could schedule time intentionally in addition to, you know, neighbors. Mm -hmm. Other questions or thoughts? I'm just trying to see if we can try to structure. Yeah, I'm wondering if like maybe we do a list of meeting dates and deliverables and content to be reviewed on the 30th or something like that, yeah, just in terms of having what like, I was thinking a proposal well. including this type of information will be available on this date to these types of group you'll have until at least this time to weigh in with this type of feedback. And I think just honoring and being clear that we're not that's, you know, a, a proposal is going to be some combination of what's practical, feasible, makes sense for us as a board to consider. But my personal view is it's worth getting as much input as we can about what folks want to see before we make any of those decisions. Okay. So are you asking the town manager to come up with the, that list? I love that. I'm happy to help. All right. I'd be happy to have your help. <laughs> All right. 
Any other considerations or discussion on this uh, agenda item? No. Owen told me that's why I came to the meeting. Sorry, out of here. <laughs> Who's our economic Owen? development director? Right, Someone Owen. we might want Owen, to talk if you're to. you're here to talk about it, let's hear it. <laughs> I don't really have any more recommendations than what Lessa already said. I mean, there are some very vague suggestions, but I think we, as she said, we have plenty going forward. I can say that um, the Waterbury Area Development Committee um, also had similar recommendations around the lot sizes and the use of single family homes, in which they thought that perhaps duplexes or triplexes would be more helpful. But yeah, I'm more here if it was like you're really going to do it. Mm -hmm. All right. And just, Good. And just to yep. talk about the affordability issue for a second, um, kind of figuring this out a little bit because I'm looking at building a home, and the numbers um, I'm getting from credible builders are, um, for nothing fancy, um, in the range of 240 a square foot. So if you're in a 60 grand to build a 1,500 square foot house, does not include site work. Um, so municipal water and sewer is great, but there's no foundation, obviously. Um, so that's the affordability issue right there in a nutshell. Um, so you can assume, you know, probably safely 20, 30 grand for a foundation. I don't know, that's a guess. Um, <coughs> And then someone's going to need to sell the land, and including the town, and pay for their costs here. So, um, you know, fifteen hundred square foot home pretty quickly gets to four fifty or so, and that's just the market and where things are. That's cheap. The last time I knew, they were up in the four hundred dollars a square foot range. <coughs> Well, not the folks I talk with. Um, <laughs> so, to be clear, I'm not. I'm not looking for a fancy fit and finish. So, so the affordability issue would be we we would essentially be footing cost and selling the land on the cheap. I guess what I'm saying is is that's a starter home. Right. And effectively a three bedroom starter home in today's world. Um, if we can make enough money on this deal to, to drive some affordability with, with essentially the profit, then that's great. I'm um, just telling you that's kind of where the landscape is right now. Well, one of the costs that we're trying to recover is uh, putting in the uh, sewer line, right? The sewer line and then the, the storage building issue. Right. I was saying, yeah. Storage building on the property that needs to come down, and then we're looking to put up a uh, relatively inexpensive storage building to replace it. <clears throat> I thought uh, that storage building was going to be fairly inexpensive as it's just <coughs> sheet metal and steel. So the new one um, needed to be a palace. Um, we're getting, we're getting um, estimates on the old one. The, the, company that did the asbestos samples came back for a second sample. Um, I didn't get word if that's because the first sample was, was too small. I simply didn't get a, get a reading or anything, or if there was no asbestos, I'm hoping it's the latter, but I'm assuming it's not. Mm. Um, but yeah, what worries me a little bit is the, is the demo cost of the old. Once the roof is gone, it's, it's you know, cinder blocks and brick and rebar. It's, it's nothing that's a million bucks to take down. In fact, it's something that potentially, um, you know, we could do with, with rent a, not our own excavator, but a bigger machine rental. Mm. And then it can all go to the ice center for storage and crush that and use that elsewhere. So it doesn't need to cost a million bucks to take down. It doesn't need to happen in, you know, on a strict timeline per se. So as long as the new one's up first, we're okay and that can happen. Roger, can I ask a quick question? Sure, Chris. This new storage building, is that for highway department <coughs> yeah. stuff? And is it is your desire to put it down here for convenience sake or 
guess yeah, what's, what's, um, what's, what's going to happen with the old ambulance building up by the town shed now? So, so the, the building has got um, it's got a bunch of stuff that's stored that's not not necessarily you know the garlands that get hung downtown are there, um, which I think those are technically fertilizing water berries. Um, bunch of stuff in it that quite frankly can probably just go to the dumpster um, but it's got um, the biggest thing for the for the village is the sidewalk plows in there um, in the summer um, and then just just a bunch of and all the all the attachments for it a bunch of other small equipment um, so the new building is uh, proposed at 3,000 square feet which is quite a bit smaller than the current one yeah I just was thinking that the ambulance once the ambulance is gone that facility up there, that space up there is going to be gone with the highway department and, you know, what connection to having it down here, if, if we yeah, up there, it's, that would free up that space for, you know, either another yeah, lot. It's, it's, it's a sidewalk plow, there's a tractor there, there's all the mowers that are for downtown. Yep. Village equipment. Okay. Um, and uh, Joe, I just uh, see you online here. I didn't know if you wanted to weigh in on behalf of uh, the housing uh, task force uh, before we move on. No, I think that what we that I, I wasn't at the meeting, so I only read uh, the no, notices that you gave. So I think that the summary that was given is is correct. All right. All right. So no more comments. We'll move on. Uh, the Housing Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. Do we have more detail, Kane? Okay. Yeah, I mean, last meeting you asked for a finer detail on what the trust would be spent on, if I remember correctly. You wanted taxpayers to know where the money was going. Um, and right now, having um, Tom's correspondence with um, Downstreet and then my correspondence with Joe and then talking to Alyssa, I kind of, you know, we nailed down a few things, right? Um, mm -hmm. That it's not that none of them have ever been said before. I believe everything on this list has been mentioned at one meeting or another. Uh, potential use for housing trust, ADU construction, which we've had multiple discussions about. Uh, and I believe your question was, whether there was demand for it or not, and mm -hmm. that is definitely something that the task force is looking into. Um, I think they're having a open, like a meeting about it, correct? Me if I'm wrong. Yeah, this Thursday our meeting. One of the pieces was around like support folks might need to develop an ADU. So we mm -hmm. encourage folks to attend the meeting to share that, um, or we will also have an online survey. But we're waiting till after because the goal was that folks were going to come on Thursday. I believe it's been on front porch forum. So, yes, additional data to come. Um, and then my next uh, little check mark here is increasing funding to current projects or programs, i.e. VHIP. Um, and we had had discussions about whether this we would just be handing out money or whether it would be a loan. And when I had first introduced the housing trust, I mentioned that Montpelier's system goes off of loans payable back at the sale of the property. Um, so we wouldn't be giving away free money. We would be welcoming it back with open arms after mm -hmm. the sale of, of a property. Um, the next one here uh, is a affordability clause, whether we wanted to include that in any funding uh, or footnote uh, at market rate or below or whether it was for local workers or not. Um, and that's just with any of the funding if we want to attach something to it mm -hmm. that says this has to be affordable or this has to be rented to local workers. Uh, Woodstock does that. Um, another bullet point here is funding infrastructure to aid in new unit construction, with especially with up on uh, Woody Ave here. We do need um, sewer lines uh, and the question on whether this funding would be applicable to that or not is up for debate, um, as it would assist in the construction of new units. Um, and then matching funds for larger projects. So 
I'm going to throw an example out, and by no means is it a real happening, but if a nonprofit organization wanted to build uh, additional housing units in Waterbury and we had a trust with funds in it that we could toss at them to speed up a project or break ground faster or add additional units, it might behoove us to do so. So those are the bullet points. Um, they're all pretty simple. They all check off the boxes of everybody, uh, you know, anyone in the area who has a housing trust. And I know I, I've used Montpelier and Woodstock as examples in the past, and I think it's because they're the strongest examples. And if, when combined, um, both of those uh, trusts do something along these lines, mm -hmm. or multitudes of things along these lines. Okay. Um. And this uh, email that you're uh, referencing is to uh, Angie, the uh, director yes. of uh, Downstreet. Absolutely. And it's asking if she would be interested in mm -hmm. managing uh, all or part of the uh, Housing Trust Fund. That is true. Hello, my name is Marissa. <laughs> <laughs> um, an animal control issue. Uh, oh, um, yep, and I believe she has responded saying that she will respond further uh, by the end of this week. Okay. Hi, this is Amy. I just had a quick question. Um, do we know the pros and cons of someone like Downstreet managing the funds? Um, so the pros are we don't have to manage. <coughs> The, 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 when it comes to things like the VHIP program, they're managing that already. So what Angie had said to us in the public meeting a few months back is that she can do that at essentially you know, little to no cost. Um, you now the challenge with all this is, um, if, you know, if you're loan, you know, whether it's a loan or a grant, the money always has some conditions. Um, so there's. There's a vetting process, there's legal work, and the town can do that um, for sure, but Downstreet does that all the time, um, and it may be they can do it cheaper. So I think that's I think that's the pro, and I certainly don't want to be in the business of you know telling Waterbury residents that they didn't qualify for a program for whatever reason. I'd rather have someone else do that, quite frankly. Um, You know, I don't know that an immediate con comes to mind because in the end, Downstreet would be managed, Downstreet if they agree to do it, would be managing the programs in a manner consistent with policies adopted by the select board. Um, so if, if we're not happy with outcomes, then that's something the select board can modify, but they're fundamentally town programs. Um, I, I can tell you from some past experience, I know um, the EFUD loan fund has reached out to banks to manage it, and it's been very, very expensive. Um, so that's managed internally, but that's a loan fund that gets, you know, two or three applications a year. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think if the town were to manage it, you know, this strikes me as a pretty big effort, probably requiring a committee. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a bit unique because you're looking at people's personal financial information. So I think outsourcing that is quite frankly a better option for everyone. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. And, I, and I personally, I agree. Okay. Yeah, like <coughs> I used to be chair of Downstreet's housing loan committee. And I think to engage them, I think having a third party is really very beneficial. Plus, they could, you know, they have managed different municipalities, different loan funds, and they can do that pretty seamlessly. So I think it's something definitely, in my opinion, it's something that we could, should look at really exploring, because I think that's just another layer town government you know there are things like it's it's always good to say yeah we want to control things but sometimes it's just very expensive to do that and you know using sometimes the experts can be much much more cost effective than 
you know, us doing it ourselves. Good point. Thank you. Other comments on this? Uh, I'll just yeah. speak again. When you asked for more information <coughs> last meeting, I figured this is what you were after, but I wasn't quite sure, so I was just <laughs> throwing spaghetti at the wall, hoping that it would stick here. Yeah, no, I, I, I do appreciate the getting more information. I guess uh, getting an answer uh, from Downstreet would be important yes. for me to say, yes, well, we're, we're ready to move forward with this because Otherwise, it's sort of like, well, we could go this way, we could go that way, it could include this, or it could include mm -hmm. that. I guess just my level of comfort would be to have a clear program moving forward that, that we know what we're voting on, uh, and at that moment, uh, we can put it to the vote. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I do appreciate getting more information. Some information would be good, and I also think it would be good to get a representative from downstream here to make a presentation as to what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. Paper's one thing. It's nice to have someone who can ask questions. Well, Angie did come forward, and she yeah. did. We, we does discussed this at some length, but it wasn't but it sort of went further down. Right. Down. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Chris. Um, King, you keep mentioning Montpelier's Trust. Mm -hmm. Downstreet and Montpelier's Trust, they may work together, but they're not one and the same, correct? Downstreet manages. <clears throat> A portion of their trust another but it it's dictated there's more layers to it Montpelier has a committee that oversees their trust they have a wider town you know they have a wider government than we do um, and then some of the programs are fed through downstream and some aren't so my question is uh, is there a possibility of getting some form of either statistics or some results that uh, that this program has yielded my concern is that um, if this isn't structured correctly, that it's just going to be another hungry mouth that's going to have to continue to be fed um, year over year. And uh, that's, you know, I'm sure that's difficult for a lot of people to want to absorb. Um, we've got issues now that need to be taken care of. Uh, I know we've got a new revenue source that's all local options tax, but there seems to be a wish list from uh, coming through the door constantly as to what this money could be used for. <clears throat> for instance, the young lady that was here the other night mentioned uh, asking the select board to look into a full-time police department, uh, and I spoke with her outside there briefly, and I said, you know, I was up to the state house on Friday. Uh, to a, for a, an award ceremony, the governor was there and he spoke about the revolving door and the difficulties putting a wedge in that door because the legislative body is in, in favor of tightening the <coughs> laws to help slow that the crime part of that down. Um, and I tried to explain to her until that the actual problem of the revolving door and the complications in the, within the justice system are stopped, having a full-time police department is like having a vehicle with a blown motor and you just, you think putting new tires on it is going to make the car go down the road, when in fact it's not. Uh, so you really, I tried to tell her that you're going to add a budget line item to our municipality that's not going to solve the problem. You're just going to throw more money at it, at it because the real problem is revolving door and, and, and the issue. So I'm, I, to relate that back to this, I just try to contain how many hungry mouths that we're going to feed here. Um, mm -hmm. need, to, need to see if we can get some information as to how this thing is yielding fruit uh, one way or the other. Oh, and yeah, uh, I can just add on this briefly is that uh, I've, I've talked to Josh Jerome, who's the community development and uh, economic development coordinator for Montpelier, um, and I can follow up with him again and see if he has some more granular data. But they have had this trust for quite some time, so there are a degree of failures and successes within how it's been implemented that I found particularly helpful for the most part. Uh, 
he had mentioned at one point they were using it to assist with uh, down payment assistance, and that resulted in a lot of the time, which is people who could already afford kind of a lot of the houses utilizing that, and they found that that was a bit of a misallocation of funds, but I, I can follow up on that. Yeah, I mean, anything that we can do to pull those problems out ahead of time and, and, and make this program more justifiable, certainly going in the right direction. Yeah, I wonder if you wouldn't mind uh, bringing that, uh, you could submit it between now and the next meeting, if that would be possible. I would like to yes, just add, uh, uh, in my conversations with um, Josh and Montpelier, he had noted, and I had made a note of his note, that the ADU program had been especially fruitful, especially in the last few years. And I don't, those numbers are in a notebook somewhere else, because they're not in this one, but I can definitely pull that out, because there was, there was some statistical analysis there. I'll just have to find it for our next meeting. Okay, yeah, I mean, it'd be helpful just to, to know that Montpelier's got this, and within the past three years, they've had uh, so many loans to build so many ADUs, and what the, how the repayment works. Okay. Yep. Oh, Joe has his hand. Oh, excuse Joe. me, Sandy, I'm sorry. Yeah, I do see yeah. your hand this oh, time. Oh, Joe, Joe did as well, sorry. Uh, I was gonna say that um, when it comes to the VHIP program, which the state started to um, fund affordable ADU development. And remember the housing trust fund, what you're essentially doing is you're buying affordability. Um, and so you're offsetting the, the, the cost of making something affordable. So ACCD, the state actually released the statistics for the VHIP program in terms of how many new ADUs were being funded. They actually have that information per county. I can forward the email to you so you can look at that. It's been a wildly successful program. In fact, the program is often tapped out at the state level. And what Montpelier is doing is they are, once the state runs out of money, they're making their trust fund available then for Montpelier residents to kind of extend that program, but just for their residents. And the same type of thing could be done here. And as Tom pointed out, you know, downstreet can manage that for very little cost because they're already doing that. But I, I guess another point that I wanted to make, I think, you know, you were talking about how, you know, for what types of projects the money could be used for and all of the things, all the bullet points that came went through are, are, are valid. I think what would be helpful though for the select board to do is to set an objective. And I recommended that, you know, there be an objective that we look at increasing the amount of affordable rentals in Waterbury by 1% per year, okay? That's about eight units, right? We have 700 and some rental units in, in Waterbury. And once you have that number, then you can look at opportunities and decide and then how much money you have. So you might say that in a year where you have, you know, a potential big housing project, most of the trust fund would go to that because you might be able to get more than eight units but you're not always gonna have those projects like we have on Woody Avenue. And in that case, the trust fund might be better used to go towards individual property owners who are looking at adding capacity. I, so I think having an objective would be a good thing and then letting either the town or the housing task force talk about how that objective could be reached and how, how, the, how much funds would be necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds good. Any comments on that? No, I, I, I agree with what Joe's saying. And in, in, in his email, the, the 1% um, footnote there, I, I agreed with. Um, and he makes a few other very good points mm -hmm. as far as setting objectives. Uh, All right. Yes. Joe, to the point around data, I know the Planning Commission just asked for updated data for the town plan. Was that for October 1 or November 1? Um, the, they want that data by October 1st. Okay, so my other thought being given that we're now most halfway through September, um, in us considering the objectives, I know we've talked about that there is data that you but the housing task force has already gathered um, and maybe it makes sense to have that presented 
to the select board at some point if that's workable on all our schedules in terms of understanding what's out in the world right now um, as we pick priorities. Tom? There's a hand. Oh, it's okay. Sandy. Sandy? Hi. Um, first of all, Joe, thanks for, I think that's, you really tell, tell it like it is and I appreciate that. And I'm definitely going to be there Thursday to listen about the ADUs. Um, one thing that I, and I understand what you're talking about, the housing trust fund for um, adding more housing. And I agree that something needs to be done to help that out and um, possibly doing what Montpelier did and adding if the AD program runs out of money, because it does. Uh, it may be out now the the VHIP may be out now. I'm not even sure. Um, I was luckily lucky to get in this time. Uh, but the question I had more so was um, the idea of using the uh, housing trust for rental assistance and how that would be specified for our Waterbury residents um, and that the money would be used for to benefit at Waterbury. I understand that there's workers that work in Waterbury and we don't have enough housing for that, but how would we know that, and I sent this email to you, how would we know that we're not helping so that somebody gets a lower rate rental and they work in Stowe or Montpelier and that's not really benefiting us, it's taking away from our housing. And I just, I guess that's one thing I would wonder if there was some kind of caveat about that you know that to specify that this is only available to um, people that work in Waterbury or you know or maybe displaced by flood damage you know yeah that's an excellent point Sandy and, and we you're right that's at the state level they don't specify that the the person renting needs to be in any specific town because it's a state but. Right. Um, we would do that at the town level. I think the best program that I would look at is the local workforce program that Woodstock has, because that's exactly what it's intended to do. They make, you know, it's not affordable as a capital A, as the government would call it. They base it upon the average median income, you know, up to 100, I think 120%. But it is for people who, who live, I mean, who work in Woodstock. And we could model the same type of a program for Waterbury. Yeah, I think that would be at least that to me seems a little bit more reasonable if you're asking taxpayers to fund it because you know, not necessarily a renter is is paying taxes and we're already hurting a lot on that. And like I said in my letter, a lot of people up we're losing a lot of housing because of the floods. I mean, and to help those people, it's keeping our residents that have paid taxes and keeping them so that they can stay in Waterbury. And I think that's important. So, but yeah, I'll definitely be there Thursday. So thank you very much. And it's at seven o'clock. I just pulled the agenda just to say the forum on uh, informational needs for homeowners interested in small construction at seven, Sandy, but you're welcome to join at six for the other updates on Thursday. And, and just, to flesh it out, just to flesh it out, Sandy, I have had a couple of pretty large business owners in Waterbury call me, um, not in the last you know week or two, but over the, over the last couple of years I've been here to say that they've pondered getting into the housing world just so they have a place for their own staff. So I think there's some interest by, by business owners for sure. Uh, definitely. Awesome. And I do just feel compelled to say as a renter who works in Montpelier and is serving my third year on the select board, I don't think that all those those folks um, are bad. <laughs> and I would also just know, I don't think we've had any proposals thus far that are proposing levying a tax on Waterbury residents for this. And we may get to that point, but right now the, the funding proposals have been from local option tax, which I recognize some Waterbury residents pay, and also ARPA funding are the two things that have been discussed. So um, again, not saying there might not be a time and a place for that, but I just want to name, I don't think rental has been the focus of that, and I would just encourage everyone to be really intentional about who we're talking about, because um, my landlord loves to tell me how much he pays in property taxes. So trust me, I'm contributing, if indirectly. <laughs>
Right. And I mean, you and Kane do benefit Waterbury. So I'm not necessarily saying that. I'm just saying it would be helpful to for people to understand that too. So thank you. All right, hold on. I work here. <laughs> there, there, there we go. <laughs> now, Kane is much more valuable. <laughs> I'll just go. Anyway. All right, any other comments on the uh, Housing Trust Fund? No? We'll uh, I would just, yep. just like to comment that I'm very glad that this has been a mainstay on our agendas, at least for this year. Mm -hmm. and that we're keeping the conversation about this going. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, just speaking for myself, I intend to keep it on the agenda until we come to a, a good conclusion on it. And it sounds as though we're getting a lot of good input uh, from a variety of sources uh, to get us towards a program that's going to meet uh, an objective which we can define possibly at the next meeting. All right. Um, local option tax allocation. We had uh, tasked uh, our municipal manager with uh, coming forward with uh, a few options for us to consider. And uh, he came back with a memo. Uh, and uh, Tom, if you wouldn't mind uh, just uh, going through this uh, with uh, your key points. Sure. So the first key point is on debt. We have. Um Two notes expiring in 2025 um, and one in 2027, and I'm suggesting that the town prepays that debt. So if the town made that payment um, now, this year, it would cost a little bit shy of $160,000. It would save the town um, almost exactly $7,500 interest in almost exactly $7,500 in future interest payments. Um, and I think just as importantly, it would cut almost exactly $107,000 out of next year's budget. So paying out the local option tax, mm -hmm. over a penny is gone when we start the budget process, which makes things easier. Um, the other beauty is that of that 159 grand we would spend this year, um, about 105 of it is internal loans. So we have a, the town has a tax stabilization fund with about a million bucks in it. Some of that is loaned out, but a million dollars on the balance sheet. So this, about, of our 160, about 105 would go into our tax stabilization fund. So we're paying ourselves. We can invest, and that would be invested on day one. Um, <laughs> so I think that's a pretty good deal. Um, Pretty good place to start the budget process with, uh, you know, 100, 107 grand out of it for next year. Um, you said that makes up for a penny. Penny, penny is about a time. penny is about 80 cents. Sorry, a penny is about 80 grand. Okay. So we're we're really one you know 1.3 cents at the start. Um, and I, I think. <laughs> right. And I think with that, out of next year's budget, we have um, a really good fighting chance at a zero, uh, and, and perhaps better than a zero. To be clear, you mean a zero <coughs> increase, Tom? A zero Just increase. to name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no taxes. I'm planning on having a municipal budget <laughs> next year. <laughs> not, quite, not quite coming for you. Yet. <laughs> um, the second, the second thought, um, reaching out to paving contractors still. But um, on Guptill Road, the, the bridge we're working on, which we call the Doc Murray Bridge, um, <coughs> we are proposing to go from that bridge up, up Guptill Road towards Waterbury Center to the next bridge, which is right at the intersection of Thatcher Brook Road. So it's about 3,250 feet. Um, that estimated paving cost is $70,000. Um, talking with paving contractors, and we think that could get done this year. It wouldn't be until the end of the paving season, um, you know, October, sometime October. Um, you know, it's funny. I feel like a hundred times in my life, whenever it rains, paving contractors call and say, well, you know, it's, it's been rainy the past week. That's kind of set us back. We have to delay your project. We've had great weather the past two weeks. Mm, We're supposed yes, to have great weather this week. So 
I'm hoping there's another side to that coin and there'll be contractors to get this done, but we think they can get it done this year. Um, <coughs> if not, if you agreed to allocate the funds, it would just be added to next year's plan and save with, pay with money in the bank. Um, <coughs> next part is the town, um, through the efforts of the recreation director, uh, received a VORAC grant, and part of that is for um, accessible pass and playground equipment at Hope Davy. Um, and the, the town share of that work would be about $30,000. So the proposal is to simply allocate local option tax and get that project done and get it behind us. And Katarina, I believe that could be done this year. Yeah, in fact, talking with the contractor, they think it could even be done by the end of this month if we have that. Well, I guess the end of a month. <laughs> <coughs> and then the final piece, had had conversations with, with crew and whoever, and this will this will not be crews, this will be the town. So whoever whatever entity is responsible for the for the immediate for any immediate flood recovery, but we've looked at um, pretty large enclosed utility trailers um, and new and, and we may not need new. Um, we don't know something beat up, but but nice enclosed utility trailers, aluminum, not super heavy, single axle. Um, so they could be towed with pretty much any pickup truck. Um, in the range of, of you know, 11 to 13, depending on what exactly you want. Um, and then we want a little extra for fit up because we build shelving in there with materials purchased by the town, but volunteer labor. Uh, but they want shelving in there just to store all the little things and make sure it all locks down so when they transport the trailer in the event of a flood, Town Hall isn't necessarily the epicenter for all the equipment in our basement is it's an enclosed trailer ready to go. Um, so all that we think can be done for 15. <coughs> and then the other thought related to that is the, the ambulance um, expects to complete their move in early winter and so that, that trailer could go in a bay, um, the current ambulance service building, which we also own uh, right behind Public Works. So all that totals just under $275,000. Um, I'm suggesting everyone in their own minds be conservative in terms of what we'll get from the local option tax this year to use 325. And I think that's quite conservative. Um, but I'm suggesting if the select board was interested in these things, perhaps the balance could be seed money for the housing trust fund. I know it's not a lot of money, particularly if you're thinking, you know, the VIT program can go $50,000. Um, but I think we're, we're formulating these programs and there's a lot of nitty gritty details, you know, pick and shovel work to get to the finish line. So I think we're some months away from, from having final programs. And then even when you have programs, you don't have recipients on day one. Um, and the other thing I'd suggest is, and then Joe had mentioned a goal for the housing trust fund. Um, is to think about um, think about programs in your own mind, and, and you know if if it's going to be a loan program in your own mind, think about what should the maximum loan amount be, and how many loans do you feel comfortable making as a town? At some point, um, you might want to, and maybe you don't, but in my mind, I suggest you consider a cap for for the program. And so, do you want to? Is that 50 loans at $50,000? Is that 10 loans? Um, but depending on, on, on that cap and depending on what that number is, um, in practice, if you have a local option tax and if you have a housing trust fund, your housing trust fund can issue more in loans or more in grants than it has available if there's a long-term plan to fund it with a local option tax. And so you can, in theory, now, issue a million dollars in loans over three years and don't need to reimburse it. That can be done through the town's cash flow and that can be done over time. Worst case scenario is some short term debt and minor interest. And so I don't think you need a lot of money in the housing trust fund on day one to start. I think you need a long term plan and some concept of what you're willing to fund um, perhaps over the next couple of years. So I thought you asked for a plan next meeting. I gave you gave you a recommended plan. Mm -hmm. You can tell me that you don't like any of it. 
and you won't hurt my feelings. Uh, okay. Comment. Um, I just did the math, Tom, on everything you have suggested. I was just writing numbers as you were saying them. And I've got 221,000 versus, you said, 275. Yep, so the debt is 159,285. Oh, gotcha. Okay. I did. Yeah. You probably used the 106. Which I did the, do the, the 106. Of next year's budget. Got it. Okay. Never mind. I, do, I, do, I will advocate strongly for the debt because I think that's, um, I think that, you know, with the school increases that mm -hmm. we saw with the school increases, I'm, I'm told are coming. I think having a, having a pretty low increase or no increase would be would make town meeting day pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Other comments? Alyssa. I'm just appreciating a second look class bullet around planning commission conservation and staff benefiting from consultant help. And I think I did hear that one of the grant sources they were looking at <coughs> got ex uh, pushed forward the municipal planning grant. So I guess do we have a sense of the timeline needed. Is that something that could go in the budget or does it feel like there's a sooner need to keep them on schedule? I guess it's a, a question I would have, not a critique of any of the proposals, but just noting if the goal is to keep that on schedule um, and there's a need for money sooner, whether it's from this or something else. I don't have an answer for that right now. I can have that tomorrow, but I don't know that offhand. No, me either. I'm just recalling that Katie Gallagher text and was like, do you have other ideas? Um, and was this matching funds for, for those grants or what? Uh... Tom's bullet just reads that staff would benefit from consultant help. I mean, I think we talked about it when the planning commission came in with their initial initial yeah. schedule, <coughs> and I don't thinking, think we followed up yet. Um, I was thinking 2025. For oh, that. yeah, because this is yeah. under that heading. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, if, if they need it sooner, I, I haven't had a conversation with, with Neil yet. Or he hasn't raised it with me, I should say. What would you need to know uh, about the paving? <coughs> um, I think um, I think the paving I will need I would need to know um, by the end of the month. Be one hundred percent sure. Just because we've we had a budget this year for paving of four fifty, and we've we've spent or allocated just about all of it, so we. Don't want to tell a contractor we might have a job. They want to. They want to have some certainty as they shuffle things around. So the sooner the better. But I think end of the month at the latest. Mm -hmm. I think beyond that we've probably missed the 2024 window. Right. So one thing we could consider would be to uh, accept uh, portions of what uh, Tom is recommending tonight and then uh, keep the others on the agenda for going forward. Yes, Kate. I was going to suggest the same thing and just bring up the debt and paving seem to be the lion's share of, of what Tom has written down here. Um, and then, of course, your remaining balance making up what could be fifty thousand dollars plus or minus um, for? It'd be more plus, I believe. I, one can only hope, but the amount of money people are spending at restaurants is dropping. Um, uh, so plus or minus fifty thousand. So those three are the those three are the lion's share of the local option tax. But I think the debt and the paving, because we need to nail down the paving this month, and we've got all the debt numbers here. I think those are the two things that we could probably debate and vote on this evening, if not next meeting. Ian. Yeah, I just want to point out, I mean, the, the savings and in, in future interest is, is a very interest to me. I think that's great in the limited 106, 107,000 from the 2025 budget. Um, Looks a smart decision for this time. Mm -hmm. I concur with the sentiment that's been presented around the table. Okay. And that that does not be cited tonight as long as I pay that before December 31st of this year, then it's off the books for next year. I, so I see no need in dilly dallying if we've got all the information in front of us. Make a motion. 
I was just going to ask, so all the other paving and the gravel road that got deferred last year is all being accomplished already, Tom? <coughs> I know we had yeah, allocated we've... ARPA funding that wasn't used in that year because of... Yeah, the yeah the the, um, the gravel road's being done this year. There was they're they're going to finish it up. They they did about half and hit the pause button. That's um, sweet road. Yeah, the, the the bridge is being worked on now. It's been worked on all summer, but they're making a lot of progress. Um, What's the total cost of the bridge? <coughs> there were two bridges: um, the bridge to the armory, and then this bridge on Guptill. And off the top of my head. Um, is I, I wish I knew this number, but I think it was around a half million dollars for both in total. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once I have the final invoices, I'll have to come back to you because um, all the ARPA funds have to be allocated by the end of this year, and so there may be some final true up if we didn't spend the full amount. Mm -hmm. Next year is Stowe Street Bridge, is that? <coughs> Um, next year is Stowe Street Bridge. That's the state's plan. Right. Okay. All right. Anyone care to make a motion? Yeah, I'll move to allocate $159,285 of the local option tax to pay off the three notes presented. Uh, the one debt to the community national bank with a principal of $54,485, interest of $845. A highway grader tax stabilization with the principal of $28,400 and an interest of $2,982. And fire vehicle tax stabilization with a principal of $19,600 and an interest of $686. No, the highway grader, I think you just read the top here. There's all, there's three years of that principle. No. Oh. And I, should I include the interest on all three years? Can I no, amend my own motion? Mm, yeah. It's, uh, it's interest that won't be paid. Got it. All right. Are we clear on the motion? Karen? Yeah, I didn't include every. Well, we, we've got it written down. Yeah, yeah. So you can just, I just did the one. You can just cite for the record. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Further discussion. Do, how often are you getting the updates, Tom? I mean, to be clear, I agree broadly <coughs> with the concept of the infrastructure and the debt paid up payment. I am going to say that that's committing. We're now going to commit essentially two thirds of the projected balance. So I'm just thinking, as has often been said, this has been our backup plan of we'll pay for that with LOT, we'll pay for that with LOT. And so I just, I, I don't disagree with the broad outlines of this, but I just, I would say more with regards to the paving than this. Um, that's my only concern. So my questions, Tom, was around, do we get monthly updates in terms of when are we going to know the total numbers? Because if this is, if this option will save this much money, whether it's paid in December, I mean, I'll vote on it today. I might propose it be later cash in, in terms of, Yeah, you, you, know. Know, you know, unfortunately don't know until, until it comes in. So they collect vendors remit at different timelines depending on their size, but the state does, you know, essentially there's quarterly true ups. And so the end of this month, the state will have the data and then they don't tell us until it's all, you know, there's a process, it's all collected and trued up. And so we will have the third quarter of this year numbers and cash um, in mid-November. So we're still two months away from getting an actual check. Okay, so per your point, we would need to decide based on the Q3 data whether to make this payment. And we're going to have to borrow from ourselves to make it if we don't have <coughs> potentially depending on how much we're getting so, in Q3. So from a practical perspective, the, the community national bank, again, wouldn't need to be paid until December 31st. Um, none, of the, none of the debt would need to be paid until December 31st, so that quite likely the cash would be in hand. But from an accounting perspective and a cash perspective, um, this is time of year we're cash rich. And then we, we go and we have this cycle where as tax payments come in, we're cash rich, we have some dips because then we pay the schools then we're cash rich again and pay the school and we're cash poor, you know, the, 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 you know, eight weeks or so before the first tax installment is due. So from, from, a, summer. <laughs> from a, just a cash flow perspective in general, once you hit the summer until, um, you know, until kind of late winter, typically the town has real sufficient cash flow to, to you know, 
sort of pay things, and if the cash, you know, if the reimbursement doesn't come for a month or two, that's not a big issue for us. I mean, we, we hire you to manage the cash, so I'm certainly not trying to, to second guess that. I guess that was my only hesitancy just in terms of, you know, and you're I, saying you're being conservative, so I hear that. And I only made a motion on the debt, not yeah. on the paving project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The debt uh, proposition has been approved. Do I have another motion? Anyone inclined to support the, the paving or the accessible paths uh, at uh, Hope Davy? Seventy thousand for the paving. Until the next meeting, when we may know more of the numbers. We can. We the only thing the problem the is meeting. with. Yeah. Hmm? We won't know them by the next meeting. Tom, right. we're not going to know until mid November, yeah. so we're going to have to decide before then. But uh, I asked Tom about. The paving in particular, knowing that uh, you need to be able to put the bid out uh, in order to get the contract uh, before the end of the year. Um, yeah. That's 70,000? 70, yeah. yeah. For approximately 60 per, uh, uh, six tenths of a mile on Guptill. And it certainly needs it. Well, I'm not one to make a motion to allocate paving my own road. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we want to pave Gaines Road for? <laughs> I thought you were on Howard. No, I'm on the corner. Okay. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Well, I feel like, yeah, if the town's going to need, we're going to have to do this at some point. Um, mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel like waiting helps us in any way. Um, but I'll make a motion to uh, um, use $70,000 of the local option tax in order to, uh, or for the paving overlay of Guptill Road from the Dock Murray Bridge to the meeting um, of the next bridge near the inter intersection of Thatcher Brook Road. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. You have 70000 to uh, put out a bid for the paving of Guptill. Any other motions tonight, or would you prefer to wait until we get more information? We've done damage on the Local option tax. Okay, good. Uh, let's move on. Uh, adopt specific questions for the rental registry. Can, can I? Yeah. Before moment, can I just say yeah. just one thing? Um, just start thinking and, and let me know in advance um, your thoughts on the local option tax and next year's budget and. and you know, do you want local option tax voted on separately, spending items? Do you want some embedded in the budget, some voted on separately? It's up to you. Just, yeah, thoughts on that in advance and wait to get your input. Okay. Okay. I will say, I think we committed to it being clearly defined. So, I'm not disputing that you could do it for either, but we said we would do it like ARPA, which I think included both categories. Yeah, I think a combination would be good. Line items are very specific. I think the voters are going to want to know, and I think that's a good way to do it, but when you get to, you know, tax re refunds and stuff like that, I think that goes over the head of a lot of voters. Okay. We well, can certainly uh, keep that on the agenda going forward as well. Uh, any, anything more on that? No. no. Okay. Uh, adopt specific questions for the rental registry. Again, we have uh, some draft questions from the town manager. Just to be clear, the dog's snoring. It's not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, 
There's no ordinance about that, as far as I remember. Um, Keep those snores on a leash. All right. Uh, Tom, do you want to just uh, go through uh, how you came up with these uh, list of questions? Uh, sure. This was all really based on the ordinance. The ordinance says um, calls for the minimum information. Uh, worked on this with staff and, and Joe from Joe Camerata from the Housing Task Force. Um, and this will be in an information system. So the bottom, the option, select one, you know, can be put in there. <coughs> the other piece I didn't didn't know in this form, but we can we can make it clear when we collect this is that um, we'll find a way to redact um, cell phone numbers. Mm -hmm. Or at least provide the option to redact them if the person wishes it, but that can be a checkbox. Okay. So that uh, designated responsible person's uh, number wouldn't necessarily be <coughs> made public right. if they request it. All right, yeah. questions. Mike? I assume that would all go to email addresses. Yeah. yeah. OK. Other comments, questions? Yeah, uh, Alyssa. Um, not on the questions, but on the rollout. I'm just recalling is we, I need to pull it, but effective January 1, is that correct? Yes, That's my understanding, yeah. And then what is our outreach plan to ensure compliance? Are we mailing this <coughs> to every property tax owner? I mean, should we send it with the second quarter property tax bill? Because I, I just feel like um, just because we pass this and we say there's a form, it's not going to create success. So they get. There's no second tax bill. It's one bill that okay. goes out. So we're going to do our own due diligence internally and try to identify everyone we think has a rental property based on our own records. Um, promote it heavily, advertise it heavily, website, front porch forum, Facebook, all those places. And then reach out to the short-term rental association, um, Airbnb, um, all those entities. And they've been pretty good at getting their own members to respond. And they were part of this process, and they really didn't indicate opposition um, to the final ordinance and anything. So I think they'll, they'll work with us and help us. Um, I appreciate that. I think it's a great idea to reach out to them. Thinking of my beloved landlord, who I've already referenced here tonight, um, I do think something like a townwide mailing may be a worthwhile investment for us because I just think there is a subset of folks who, you know, the goal of this in my mind is in part to have really clear data, and I just think starting from a place of our assumptions about who we think is renting may not lead to a path to success. So I guess I would advocate for, in addition to whatever <coughs> maybe we do a minor postcard, but in terms of costs, I think if we're going through the staff time and effort to do this, mm -hmm. I think it might be worth the investment to get compliance. Karen, how many, do you know how many parcels we have? 2,400. 2,398. So for uh, a thousand dollars to mail some, you know, I'm not including printing, printing and postage is now more than fifty cents, but roughly. Well, if you did a postcard, though. yeah, postcard, postcard. or bulk postcard mail, that's expensive. cheaper, like whatever it is. I just mm -hmm. think. Can you do something associated with mailing tax bills? No, you don't mail tax bills again. Tax until bills are out. Well, I'm just looking at next year. We so. want to get this by January first, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. no. There's no mailing of that kind that's going out that you could oh. piggyback. Mm -hmm. no. <coughs> what about well, it's not like you don't parcel know. owners that don't live in town? Would you just use their address listed on yeah. okay. on their tax bill? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, you use the, the tax uh, the addresses, right? But so anyway, not, not per the, I'm fine with the questions, and I guess that would just be the future thing before we're rolling it out. I know Lisa's here already and listening in, so that we have that new <laughs> source, but we could do a specific request to Lisa and the groups, as you're saying, when we get there. I think yes, Kane, sorry. I was just going to say, this all, this all looks pretty straightforward to me. Uh, there's nothing that, would con that, I, that confuses me. Um, and it's just, you know, a super baseline 
for questions. I think this is I think this is good. This is a good standard. It can be changed. It can, mm -hmm. but I don't really see like name of property owner, physical address of property owner, what's your email and phone number. Like that's all. Just yeah. it's not like what are your last fourteen years of dental records, you know, like <laughs> It's not too invasive either. Do we need to do uh, define the difference between short and long term rentals? Oh, that's that's in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. isn't there? It's in the ordinance. <coughs> Remember, you had that whole like if it's four days or twenty four hours or something. I read it today because somebody actually I've received a number of calls from people asking where this is. Uh huh. Like they, they seem to know that there's a compliance issue and they they how do I do it? I don't want to be out of compliance, and I just keep telling them it's not, it's mm -hmm. not live yet. So there's, there's, there's already a some anxiety of building who up. Know that this is they've been waiting. So mm -hmm. okay. 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 Question: um, What what will the registry look like? <coughs> it'll it'll look exactly like that's just online okay. on a system you can on, on, on a web based form. And then the registry, we definitely discussed this, and right now I'm drawing a blank, is public record, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Is there a, may I ask a question? Is, yes. Is there an option that the, you just made this point and made me think of this? Is there an option to ask people if they want to keep their information confidential? Because occasionally <coughs> we get folks looking for housing yeah, so that call the town clerk because you know evidently I know everything yeah. including where to rent something so I wonder if we can make that optional to yeah, redact we're, we're hoping to do that yeah in the, in, the, in the online form that do you want your you know your information redacted right because mm -hmm. that would be a resource I could point people to if they were looking for housing right. to say mm -hmm. check the rental registry just, mm -hmm. just a thought Marnie Hi, uh, Marnie Martins. I'm a library and a resident. Um, I have a couple rental properties, <coughs> just very small, but I apologize. I don't know much about the ordinance. So I guess I get my question, especially when it comes to personal public information, if my information is all of a sudden out there, how is it going to be used by the public or used by the town? Like that, you know, I just happen to. <coughs> have a couple units, I don't know, like I, I don't know much. I need to learn more, obviously. Mm -hmm. But how, what's, what, how would you summarize something? Well, it sounds like you're looking for some data on what's available. Why would, why would you put out my name? <coughs> so the town has, I think, a few goals with the, so to, to, to take a step back, the town adopted an ordinance some months back, and, and so the registry is part of that. But I think that there were a few goals with the ordinance the biggest goal was just to track the rental properties and the type of rental properties we have in the town. So over time, we have some understanding of what's changing. Um, maybe how to dedicate housing trust fund resources to, to changes, uh, to implement changes. Another component of it is simply having appropriate contact information to the person in charge of the property. And if we have rentals, we want to make sure in the event that there's a need to contact someone that we can. And it's not just, you know, PO Box 114. Um, we've got someone, someone's phone number that town staff can call in the event we need to. So it's not intended for the public to have that. It's just for town to have that contact if and when it's needed. Okay. Besides that, someone mentioned public registry. So the, the intent is to have um, all the personal contact info of owners and responsible persons for the property redacted unless the person doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think this first uh, came up uh, when we are looking at uh, short-term rentals uh, and their potential impact on long-term rentals. Yeah. And uh, I know the Housing Task Force spent some time looking at this uh, and came to the conclusion that they really didn't have the sufficient data to make any real uh, conclusions about that. So that's uh, really where, where it started from. Uh, and, then, and there's been a certain amount of concern about the growth of short-term rentals, impact on town, the neighbors, et cetera. Thank you. Yeah. 
All right. To, um, Marnie, yeah. just to point out, the ordinance is on our website it's under ordinances, yeah, policies, and plans. Okay. Can't read it. No, it's that yeah. Fast. yeah. <laughs> just want to make sure you Thank know where you to find it. I'll, I'll look into it, but I mean, I, I kind of get the, the big picture of it, but when somebody mentioned public records, I was like, well, you know, who, who has access to this if it's the town and they need to get in touch with, you know, somebody who's not there? Um, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so, do I have a motion to adopt uh, the questions? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, Lisa. Just to be, just to clarify, and this might help if there's people watching too. Um, in can terms you come of like, up just no one can hear it online. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I did ask Marnie. No, only because if you're clarifying for online, they just yeah, said they like can't to. hear it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Lisa Scaglia. Um, Lisa Scaglia from the roundabout. Um, I just want to, it might be helpful to clarify to people like, if they're going to see this new thing online eventually, um, what information will they see and what information would be confidential? Just because I want to make sure, like, from Marnie's question, right. um, I can understand where, like, the, somebody's phone number might be not available when somebody looks on the database, but I'm sort of imagining what we have for our property tax records, where I can look up anybody's address and find out who the property owner is, the dimensions of the property, see where it is. So, so would it be similar to that, essentially? No, the, 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 database, the database will not be online. It's an online-based platform for people to input the data, but there's not an online component for people to look at other people's data. It's, it's just an online-based um, to gather the data. To gather the okay, data. so it's not going to be like a searchable database of rental properties <coughs> in Waterbury. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. It will be for staff. But okay. To be clear, if we had a public records request, everything that comes in our office is yes. available for public consumption. Right. So if there's a component we can put in place to redact certain information, like a property transfer has your social <coughs> security number on it, but we don't put it on our website. We can redact that. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So, but to be clear, Tom's not suggesting that people can go on our website and search, but it's a tool that we have, and if we're asked for it to comply, we have to provide it. Okay, all right, that helps. Does that make sense? Does that help, Marnie? Just okay. understand. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering, yeah. you have an example of what you're thinking the town might need to contact a property, you know, a landlord for? Vicious dog bite. <coughs> Vicious. Some, those sure. kinds of things happen all the time, and you live out of state, and we don't have your phone number anywhere because we've never collected them. So you wouldn't contact the dog, you know, the person who's living in that property? Well, we absolutely would, but it's important to also notify a land owner yeah. that they have a situation on their on their property. Sure. I mean, I just pulled that out of thin air, but it's a no, no. I'm just I'm just curious. You've got a call tonight. It's, yeah. I'm, it's, it's, I'm, you know, I'm always in communication with my yeah. tenants, so I've never had a situation come out of nowhere that I was unaware of. But I'm just yeah. curious how you would envision. No, you know, we get um, you know, I don't want to say regularly, but noise complaints. Yeah. Um, on occasion, there's public safety issues, fire responds, and, and the, the renter is there. And if it's a short-term rental, they might not immediately, you know, they might have oftentimes through the app contact information for the owner. And, and that's how I've done my Airbnbs myself, but I don't necessarily have a cell phone. <coughs> so just an easy way to contact whoever is yeah. responsible for the property. So yeah. It's not intended to be used for anything but, but necessities. Okay. Thank you. Dog was in Moortown, thankfully. So. No, <laughs> oh, you got lucky. <laughs> we're having good good luck with neighbor, neighboring dogs. Um, all right, uh, do I have a motion to adopt the questions uh, as presented? I make a motion to approve the um, adopt the questions in the rental registry as discussed at this board um, meeting. Ian, you want to take this one? I'd like to second that motion. <laughs> All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Was Hearing length of leases a Joe request? I'm sorry? That's the only one I had. If it's a long term rental, do you lease for 12 months? If no, please describe the length of your leases. I'm, I'm not following you. It's on, the, the, it's on the back. Okay. Um, so. On the front. No, I got options. nothing on the back. Select one, short term, long term. If oh. it's long term, do you lease for 12 months? If you don't no, even read describe the length of your leases. Oh, yeah, right under options. No kidding. 
Hang on. Okay. I mean, I'm not disputing there's value in that. Mm -hmm. It's an in-between, if you will, between short-term and long-term yeah. in terms of data data. But that was just my question. Yeah. So I'm still not quite clear what you're asking or I just asked if Joe requested that I was wondering why oh, we wanted yeah. that information and I assume Joe wants it for the data but <coughs> yes that's correct yeah. okay any other discussion hearing none all in favor say aye aye aye, aye. any opposed any abstentions all right the uh, proposed uh, rental registry questions are approved All right, uh, Velco Power Pole on Blush Hill. Yes, I, I don't recall if I gave the full Velco decision in the packet, but in July, um, the town heard from some folks on Blush Hill Road, and this is um, this is the area um, really between Crossroad and Kimberly Lane. The, the Power companies put in, in many, many places, this is a major issue statewide, um, they use laminated power poles, which were expected to last decades and decades, and after, I think, 15-ish years, they're all rotten inside. Mm. Um, so this is one such case. So Velco, Vermont Electric uh, Power Co um, Vermont Electric Company, had an emergency hearing with the Public Utility Commission we were not a party to that hearing, um, but uh, staff attended, and there was a follow-up hearing, and uh, we weren't available. We had an attorney, and when the, when the attorneys attend on our behalf, um, just to understand the issue. Um, the Public Utility the Public Utility Commission approved a temporary fix. That temporary fix has a, uh, a power pole replacing the original one and three additional poles, and the additional poles are wooden poles, but they're, they've got 12-foot wide structures on each side, so they're, they're pretty darn big. Um, they're right in the backyard of several homeowners. Um, <coughs> they were a party to the hearing, and, and they attended, obviously. The, the final order issued by Velco um, essentially doesn't clearly call for the, sorry, let me step back, the final, the final fix within the order by Vel, would, would, a Velco hearing, they take formal testimony, and one of the, uh, sorry, a PUC hearing, one of the points made by Velco is they will restore the site to the original condition as closely as they can, which, clearly means all the poles come out except for the one. And, and the one that's failing will be replaced with a steel pole. So in the end, it'll look quite similar to what it was before. The final order did not clearly specify that. Just using layman's reading, it just simply, just simply approved what was presented, really. And so, you know, the, the, the neighbors, I think, have some concerns as to why that, because it's not in the final order, that maybe Velco won't prioritize things. Their, their main priority is they've got to get the replacement poles up because there's this transmission line to Stell that is not energized right now. And that, one, is revenue for them, I'm sure. And, and two is, is the ski area. According, according to the hearing, that's, you know, that's a power supply issue for Stell. <coughs> um, so the concern is perhaps that fix gets made and maybe the, there's not a high priority on restoring the the original conditions, which means taking down everything else. So the letter simply says, please clarify the order. Um, Rick Weston um, used to be an administrative law judge for the Public Utility Commission, so he was helpful in drafting the letter. This was his line of business for a long time. 
Um, so I think from the town's perspective, there's no harm in asking for the order to be clarified, and there's certainly no cost to it. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. I confused myself three times over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, just, hmm, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, my understanding is that we're just asking them to please clarify that they'll do what they said that they would do mm -hmm. in the hearing, but failed to put on paper. Mm. The not putting on paper concerns me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Does public safety not try everything? Yes, and so that's what that's why the emergency order occurred. Um, and the minute they found out the the poll was at risk, they de-energized right. the line. I don't think these people. I know they're concerned about their view sheds, but they would probably be less, more concerned if yeah, the pole fell right on their property. And they're not. They're not disputing the temporary fix at all. They just want to be sure that the the multiple right. power poles come down when this is all said and done, and they come down in a, in a reasonably timely fashion. Yep. Totally. Um, and having gone up there, I, I agree. It's it's you know they're putting these power poles right in their backyards. All right. Cool. Anyone care to make a motion? Oh, do we have to authorize Tom to send this uh, letter? <coughs> because the letter was endorsed by us. Yeah. I would suggest I dating it, was, it the next day, then. I can do that. I, I suggested to the neighbor owners, I, neighboring property owners I spoke with, that a select board endorsement would carry more weight than just a letter from me. Mm -hmm. How many properties is this with that? <coughs> um, there's two landowners in particular, I believe, where the poles will be on their property. But really, you know, there's yeah. that com the there's a complex right down there. Yeah. Larkins. Um, and I think people on the other side of the road, now they weren't parties to the, to the hearing, but I think it affects an awful lot of people. Uh, I move to authorize the town manager to send this letter to the Vermont Public Utility Commission. That's written. Okay. Do I have a second? Yep, second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Tom has authority to uh, send the letter. And next on the agenda is to look at the agenda for um, the 30th. All things flood for two hours. <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. five items from tonight to yeah. transfer over <laughs> if we're doing that. <laughs> yep. Go ahead. Um, well, one, clarifying if, we're, if all things flood is including crew and natural disaster preparedness committee and noting that we need to invite those parties specifically if that's the intent. I believe that was part of the intention. Yeah, I talked to group. I yeah. haven't talked to the committee, so just noting we should do that. Okay. Um, five items to add. Uh, Senior Center ARPA. Mm -hmm. um, I guess Tom is noting that we also are going to have to true up all the ARPA for because the allocation needs to be done by the end of this year. So anyway, it we doesn't do have this. to all happen on the thirtieth. Oh yeah, no, I know. But so, yeah. Senior Center see. ARPA was the one. Mm -hmm. We said follow up on the outreach plan uh, for Armory slash Woody Ave. Um, more housing trust fund updated. Whatever we have. So more updated. Yeah, we should have word back from Downstreet by then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And we're going to get some information from Owen, uh, and maybe we'll have some information uh, from the uh, Housing Task Force. Just a moment of clarity. I yes. thought you were reserving the meeting on the 30th for all things flood related. We were. Because you have another. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not so, wrong. Okay. Especially I did because my intention last, the last time we sat here, Alyssa, you said something like, if you know, if Karen doesn't want to come, that's totally. okay. I don't want to tap out of a meeting that has like greater content, and you want to be involved in the dialogue and not be responsible for taking notes. But you know, if it was all things flood, it sounded more like a dialogue and less 
mm -hmm. motion driven, and now it sounds like we're shifting to just like a regular, you know, forgive my, <laughs> but kind I of think you're both correct. <laughs> standards to select board meeting. So I just want to, you know, could these items that you're just listed not wait until October 7th? Our next well, regular select I told Justin that we would take up the uh, senior center request to, sp to spend the unspent funds <coughs> on the new stove. I don't think that's going to take a lot of time. Okay. Uh, so I just soon add that one, but maybe we can uh, take a look at these others and determine if we uh, have the uh, time and interest to take them on uh, on the 30th or uh, kick them down to the uh, 7th of October. Well, I think both are true. It's also about, I mean, as as was well evidenced tonight with the uh, dog, vicious dog example, <laughs> you, you participate in many things, but I want to stand by, like, I did absolutely say that, and I'm happy to commit to doing minutes for a meeting with more on it if we think, uh, again, personally, I've said I thrive prior to 9 p.m., so personally, selfishly, yeah, like, well. I'm okay with doing more on the 30th, but I also want to recognize it's an above and beyond staff commitment, so I'm okay with taking <coughs> more involved minutes um, if it's truly just the minutes question as opposed to, like, participating more broadly, which I also want to respect when you want to do it. Mm -hmm. So... But as Roger said, maybe it's a compromise. Maybe it's some, but not all of them. All right. Uh, did you have any others that you wanted to suggest? No, I think that was all of that. I have rental registry outreach, but I don't think that needs to be at the next meeting. It was just a note I made to myself. Okay. Rental registry will put in the parking lot for the yeah. 7th. Outreach. Yeah, I think the senior center are, but reallocation will take 10 minutes. I'd be surprised if it takes that long. Mm. Well, and my only question for Tom is, I thought 2024 was the allocation, not spending it. Correct, so allocation. If so he said they were going to be ready by 2026, my question <coughs> was, I mean, I guess if they have a pressing, I felt like can't they just still <coughs> use it for the same I, thing, I even though them, they're delayed two years? I, I mean, we can discuss that. Um, at the farmer's market. Okay. And their, their oven is the, the range he described, I forget the... The, the, Vulcan. the Vulcan. The Vulcan. Mm -hmm. um, they've they've sunk quite a bit of mon money into it the past year, and it's old. So I think mm -hmm. he's just said, well, you know, we've got a pressing need now. The money was previously approved for something different, but can we get reallocated? And I said, well, I'm not sure you can or you can't, but this is the place to ask the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't see why we would have any real problems by letting them reallocate yeah, the funding. Yeah, I'd like to see the original motion when we allocated the funds to know if they have to ask us at all. Because if it was just for kitchen or for kitchen updates. Mm -hmm. I think it was specifically yeah, for, for the code system. system. Yeah. Some of the code issues. Oh, okay. Yes. So. They, they were not up to code. Was a piece of that installation too? I remember it being one of my to first points. <coughs> install the so, Really? Yeah, the original oh, so issue was, was that, that the code wasn't they needed would a new code. In like April? And a new exhaust for it, and that wasn't up to code. And I think the motion pertained to that specifically, but it was a hood. It might have been some other equipment. But so if they got 26K, and they're now going to spend 10K on the vent and the oven, the new oven, that leaves them with six. Is that enough for installation <coughs> through this ARC funding? I'm not sure. So that would be the only thing that I would say is if we're spending all our funds on the stove and now we can't install. The event that we've previously bought doesn't make sense to. Me. I don't know. All right. Well, that's going to be. Uh, well, maybe we'll take a full ten minutes. We won't know anything until Justin comes back with something. Yeah. More right. Right. Just All right. <coughs> but uh, we can keep that on. And maybe uh, hit that yeah, before right. we get to all things uh, it flood. Because I remember <coughs> arguing with Mike about it. <coughs> What are you arguing? Oh, we were looking for the motion. And I was like, it was one of my first votes, and I remember arguing with Mike about it. OK. Well, <laughs> you got time to, to take, get, go back there. We'll add that in. Um, and then all things flood, we may want uh, a little bit further uh, delineation of uh, points within that. Yeah, we could do like mitigation. We could do like response mm -hmm. roles in future disasters. We could do staffing update, we can do public communication <laughs> regarding all things flood. Okay. Um, 
And then um, the outreach uh, on Woody Avenue. Um, do you want to keep that in? At the end of the sesh and after all things flood? Brief review of dates. I mean, what do you think? Then we'll Something have them the more than a month ahead of time, given that this will be the mm -hmm. 30th and that will begin the 7th. But that could just be akin to this letter where we said, that looks nice. That's my thought. Okay. And then we can get further information on whatever comes in on the Housing Trust Fund. All right. Perfect. Um, and just to get on your radar, the audit is finally finalized. So they can present at some lobby date in October. Is that late? Is that later than normal? <laughs> a little bit later than normal, yeah. They didn't run into problems, it just took longer. We do have two more years. There was a five year contract approved when Shuffle was yeah. here, so. Do you have a sense of how much time it'll take them for that presentation? Half an hour? Yeah. Yeah, it's never, never, never five minutes. And then something I'd like to add to the parking lot, and I'm not ready with anything here, but it's, you know, a month, six weeks out, is um, I'd like to um, have a conversation about Hope Davy and some of the neighbor issues we're trying to settle. So, What's the what's the item then? Hope Davy. Just call it Hope Davy. Not center chains specifically. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is no center chains, bear in mind. That's part. Of yeah, that. so that's, that's an organization that doesn't exist. Hmm. Well, that's how that's how lots of people who play refer to the course. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> um, okay. I think we're all set for uh, September 30th, and we've got some things uh, potentially lined up for October 7th, and the meeting to follow that. Um, are we going to need an executive session tonight? We do not. Beautiful. Then we can entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. All right. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Amazing.